But Michael, as a captain, when you're in the huddle, who was the maximum talker in the Australian team? Apart from the captain, obviously. Like, who would come well, up with changed, many didn't it? When I first started, I had uh, Hayden, Langer, Ponting, Martin, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lehman, Gilchrist, McGrath, Gillespie, Warren, Lee. I had so <laughs> many senior players around me that, you know, again, at certain stages, all of them would, would have their say, but that group was based on, it's not what you say, it's what you do. You know, it was their attitude at training, their preparation, um, how skillful they were as players as well. We're very lucky to have so many great players in one team, but it, I can't, it, wasn't, it wasn't based on, you know, what, what can you say? It's not, it's, cricket is not like rugby league where yeah. the emotion and the adrenaline that you get so fired up, come on boys, we've got to go do this, and you take the field, and then I've got to stand in field for eight hours <laughs> in slip, and the ball comes to me once. Yeah. You know, so all that emotion and adrenaline yeah. lasts 30 seconds. Our sport is not like that. Yeah. You know, maybe for a fast bowler, getting fired up yeah. can make you bowl faster. Yeah. Yeah. Even for a batsman, you know, I, I relied on music. So before I'd walk out to bat, I would sit in the change room with headphones on the whole time waiting to bat because I felt music gave me a, a, an energy but a calmness. Nice. And then I'd take my headphones out and then I would sing whatever the last song was in my, in my head I would sing that my whole innings, whether I made 10 or 100 or 300. Wow. That song would just keep playing and playing and playing because I felt like, like I say, me being over pumped, I would play a big shot early. Me being feeling flat and tired and sleepy, I'd get a good ball and nick one. So I had to try and get my head into a position where it was calm, but it was sharp. And that's where music was, was oh, my saving. So, so the right balance, yeah. that's very critical. You should not be too charged as well. And what different, worked for different you? roles. Yeah, what well, worked for so. you, Hoggy? Well, it'd be annoying if you're batting at the other end and you didn't like the song you were singing. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't singing it out loud. I wasn't carrying oh, it. <laughs> different, different personalities as well. Uh, you know, that makes you, t it makes you tick. Um, for someone like myself, if I was thinking about the game, I was gone. So um, we did a psychological analysis and I was a mozzie thinker. I could think about the game beforehand. Um, so the day before, I was allowed to think about it and do my plans. But when I was out in the middle, I just had to go out and enjoy it and think on my feet. And uh, that, that's when I operate best is when I think on my feet. If, if I'm sitting here and we're doing an interview and I planned everything, to, right to a T, I'm gone. Mm. Uh, so you defy all logic about preparation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, <laughs> don't the, train. <laughs> well, someone like uh, it, uh, there was one test match I was playing against India at the MCG, and um, I've walked out there, and I'm, first thing I'm facing Ishant Sharma. He's steaming in, and I, I'd watched an AFL football match. It's a massive stadium, and I went up and stood at, uh, sat at the highest point at one stage during that footy match. Ishan Sharma's coming in and I'm looking up at that thing, at that part of the stand, I'm going, I'm an ant down here. I'm an ant. What would they be watching up here? And then as he got to there, I thought, oh, geez, yep, right. But, but then I was, I was batting with Gilly and Harbishan oh, bowled yeah. one and it's gone over mid on for six. And Gilly's gone, what are you doing? I said, I've really got no idea what I'm doing. I'm just enjoying it because I'd only just got back in the Australian team and I, I was at that stage, I was... 36, 37, and playing test cricket, I knew, I knew that my time was coming to a very uh, quick end, and I just wanted to make the most of it and enjoy every moment of it. So I, I had a different approach to these guys, um, probably because, uh, how can I put it? You know, they were talented. I, I, I had some talent, but I always felt that because I was in and out of the team when I was playing, I was probably the weak link if an opposition were looking at us, and I just thought, right, I'm going to be stronger than the opposition players, because if I'm the weakest link, I'm the one that's going to drag these guys down, so my standard's got to lift, and uh, if they can't crack me, they can't get an inroad in the, into the team. But what, when you're in that state of mind, that you, know, you feel you're the weakest link in the team, do the teammates come and help you? Oh, they, they, were, they were absolutely fantastic. Uh, the, Austra the Australian group at that stage were brilliant. Um, we were all as one, and they knew when I was ticking and when I wasn't. Uh, and that, that was a good thing about, I think when you looked at it, when I came back in uh, in 2003 to the one day team, 
we had a, uh, so the psychologist came up, I did a test, and then he gave us information of all the other players, what makes them tick and what doesn't. So in that 2003 test match where I'm 12th man, I've gone up to JL, go and get stuck into these palms. Come on, Alfie, you know, go and nail them. <laughs> and then Alfie's pumped. And then I go up to Hados, come on, Hados, <laughs> go and get stuck into them. And Hados has turned around, get stuff, Toggy, you know, and just <laughs> unleashed on me. And anyway, I've, I've stood up and I'm walking back, dragging my tail behind my legs up to the back of the change rooms. And Gilly goes, go and read your psychological notes, Hoggy. <laughs> Matthew Hayden. Don't talk to him before he bats. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't very good at English uh, at school. I never read books. <laughs>